We're back for week number eight, Road to the Derby. Andrew Capone, who's got the action, my partner as always, Caleb Knight, taking a stand. Caleb, uh, last week, great call, or two weeks ago, I should say, in the Tampa Derby. Your long shot came in and ran up there for a second. We had the exacta. What did you think of that race? Yeah, uh, I had to think back because that is two weeks ago. We were off last week, but I thought it, the race ran relatively to form. Classic Causeway appeared to be a cut above that field, and he ran like you would expect him to. I was happy to get Grantham to run a nice race and hold on. Hopefully that sort of franks the Withers form a little bit, which is a drum that I've been beating for a couple of weeks now. I know the figures came back definitely on the light side from the Tampa Bay Derby, so I'll be a little bit curious to see how some of these horses do coming out during their next start, but I think it'll be something good to keep an eye on, and I thought it was a nice little exacta that we had in the race. Yeah, I, th I think it came back great. Um, this week we down to New Mexico, Sunland Park, home of Mind That Bird. I feel like that's what everybody knows about it. If you've ever been there, the big statue, everything's about Mind That Bird when it comes to, uh, to Sunland Park. So we're going to head down there. We have a nice card. that's on Sunday this coming week. Um, we have a nice group of eight going one and one eighth of a mile. Um, 50, points at, 50 points here for the winner. Um, before we get talking about it, just to throw up a little stat here from our Association Nation uh, TTT here. Uh, looking at this track on dirt routes, we're 56% wire tire. Um, we don't see that too often where it's that heavy speed favoring, especially on routes. Sometimes you see it on sprints, um, and the rail seems to be quite dead. Um, so we look at our last uh, 16 races. The rail seems pretty dead, the middle of the track where you want to be, and you definitely want to be on or within one length of the lead at first call. So let's uh, rip through these here. Uh, starting off with the number one horse, Costa Terra. Steve Asmussen ships in from Oakland Park. Um, the horse hasn't really done much in its career, and I don't know if it should be here. Um, horse is pretty slow, and it is a horse is sitting on an absolute dead rail, um, and it doesn't have the running style all that you'd want to see here. Um, I don't know what Asmussen's doing. I don't know if it was encompassing. Maybe he's taking a shot here. Maybe he's an owner's call. Um, I'm going to take a toss at number one horse to start. Uh, what do you think of the two and the three? Sure. The number two, classic moment. This was a hard horse for me to really get a read on. There's so many questions for me about this horse. I was surprised to see that on the form anyway, they have Rosario listed to ride, which seems a little unusual for him to come in for you would assume it has to be this mount who he's never rode before horse ran fine last out of the mine uh mine that bird derby ran a decent third that was probably third best that day did get a bit of a wide trip so it wasn't the cleanest of trips but hard to say that it would have really made a significant difference in the end uh, this horse has talent but not really sure about the distance here he seems to do better in his two races around one turn and hasn't quite had that punch since stretching out. So this is a horse that I think will take money on connections and I'd probably be inclined to play against at the short price, but uh, definitely is usable if you have a, a different opinion or if you think Rosario knows something. The number three, Fowler Blue. This is a horse that uh, was also in that Mind That Bird Derby last out. And this is a horse that I would actually give a bit of a pass to simply because for one, he, he does seem to be somewhat of an every other kind of race horse where he, he posts a win in his maiden. He kind of throws a clunker. He posts a win at Santa Anita. He kind of runs a clunker. So I'm kind of wondering if this is maybe not a very consistent horse. And the other thing would be that this is a horse that drew the rail last out in the Mind That Bird Derby at Sunland Park. As you alluded to earlier, the rail is not the place to be going one mile or really any route at Sunland Park, uh, two for 42 this meet from the one post on dirt routes. So I'm willing to give him a pass on that. I don't think he ran that poorly. He probably can't win this race, but I think he could be usable underneath. I think that takes us to the four. Slow down, Andy. Yeah, it does. I just want to make one note. You mentioned uh, Joel coming in. He's actually also coming in for optionality in the Sun Oaks. Uh, Optionality has won two black types, Zia and I believe Remington, um, and has an opportunity in Oaks. So I think he's also coming in bright optionality. Just a note there. Um, I, he's the only one that can go to Dubai, so it's interesting to see. He's doing quite some traveling, I believe, this weekend, to say the least. Uh, so we'll move on to the four here. Slow down, Andy. Morning line favorite. Uh, I don't necessarily know why the horse is the morning line favorite. Um, horse one at the Louisiana Futurity, uh, the um, Los Alfaturi, uh, to earn first points, ran a clunker in the Risen Star. 
hasn't worked that well since. Uh, I'd love to see a Dylan Newell horse take a lot of money like this. I think it's a horse that you can probably use underneath. I think the horse is probably miler as well, or maybe one and sixteenth. Um, I think this is gonna, this distance is going to hurt the horse here. Uh, I'm going to toss this horse as well. Um, for the win, I will use it underneath in my tries. Brings me to the five. Bye-bye, Bobby. Local trainer Fincher here. He's very known, well known at the track. Uh, one at first asking, but has been 0 for 3 since then. Did have two nice seconds in some local stakes. Um, last out in the mind mapper. Uh, losing to the eighth, eighth horse here, straight up G, uh, at the same distance as they um, horse of bridesmaid, two seconds in a row. I, I, I never like to see that when, I, when they're two seconds in a row. Maybe the horse just doesn't have that will to get by. But I will say the horse did fire a very nice bull on Sunday. Um, so the horse definitely is working well and for this. Um, not necessarily a horse I'm going to use on top, but again, a horse I'm going to be using second and third for my tries. What did you think of the six and the seven? Number six, Pepper Spray. So this was a horse that entered that Mind That Bird Derby perfect, uh, three for three, undefeated in that race, albeit beating up on probably some you know, mostly inferior competition. Uh, he gets into the Mind That Bird Derby and just really didn't do a whole lot of running that day. He was a little bit wide. He, he didn't get the cleanest of trips, but it, it's hard to excuse that seventh by 13 length performance there. If you liked him going into that race, I think you're going to get a wonderful price on him uh, come Sunday. And I think you need to back him again if you thought that he was a good horse going into that race. But for me, I, I wasn't super high on him in the first place. I don't know that this horse is really a legitimate contender in this spot because the waters here are probably a little bit deeper with a couple other shippers coming in. So for me, Pepper Spray is a horse we'll probably have to pass on. The number seven, Chrome King. Uh, this is another shipper coming into Sunland Park, although it's not your standard Santa Anita, Del Mar kind of shipper. Uh, this is a horse that's coming out of uh, Turf Paradise. So the horse ran a nice race last time out and earned a pretty respectable speed figure in that Turf Paradise Derby last time out. Uh, was Drew the rail, but ended up getting very, very wide into the stretch to loop the field and clear and really power home. It was really a visually impressive race that day. Uh, and the figure did came back, did come back strong. Uh, my question here is really just what was he completely beating in that field? Uh, he did beat a horse named Phineas, who was a respectable two-year-old in California at Santa Anita and Del Mar last year. Uh, that horse has not really moved forward that much at three, but Chrome King's a horse that I certainly think could make some noise and maybe run underneath but I'm not really sure this is a horse that I'd be running to bet on top. But, but you're getting a good price, and the horse does sort of fit on numbers here. So uh, this is a horse I think could be a wild card in this field. I think the last runner here is the number eight, uh, straight up G. So what do you think of this horse, Andrew? So I looked at the horse over and over again. Um, I'll talk about it in a little bit, uh, why I'm going to take it. But uh, it, it, ball trainee working like an absolute monster in the, in the morning. Um, so far, doing very well in his career. Three for five lifetime, one second, and two of those were in Cali State. Had one lifetime, three for five lifetime, one second, two wins in Cali Stakes. Um, mind that bird last month here. Uh, fits the bias perfectly. We'll get out there in front. Uh, likes to get going and keep going. Don't be a short price. Um, a note that I went back and looked at the horse and which really impressed me. I've seen the horse continuously improve. It put its second best figure last time out. Uh, but if you go back to its uh, when it broke its maiden, it was uh, at Del Mar in November. Uh, it was six furlong sprint, and the horse put its top, top figure up and come into that race at six furlongs. The track was only 20% of horses were winning on or within one length of the lead. So he was going against a very, very strong closer bias. Um, came out, got to the lead, and kept on going. Uh, and as he stretched out, he seems to just be getting a little bit better each time. So this is a horse that I'm going to be really interested in. Um, when we talk about our top picks, this is going to be my top pick here. He's coming in in great form. Uh, Baltus has been having this horse train in the morning with a horse called Shooter Shoot. Uh, used to be a little bit better. It's fallen off a little bit. Lost, finished at fifth last time out uh, in the San Carlos. Um, this horse is a bias play for me. I like playing the bias in tracks like this. It should run them off their feet. Gonzalez comes in for the mount. Uh, him and Baltus are 20% together. I think this is going to be the horse I'm going to be singled to uh, on everything key to top. What was your topic? Yeah, I landed on number five, Bye Bye Bobby. And uh, Bye Bye Bobby actually lost to your pick, uh, Straight Up G, last time out in that Mind the Bird Derby. 
I definitely respect straight up G. I think that this is going to be your pace setter and uh, arguably the best horse in the field. I, I watched that replay a couple of times. And the one thing I kind of noticed was it, it looked like straight up G was just really tiring late in that race. He's, he switched back to his wrong lead inside the 16th pole and allowed Bye Bye Bobby and uh, Classic Moment to make up about three lengths and not that much ground. So I'm a little curious on some of these horses to get the distance. And Bye Bye Bobby really struck me as a horse that really wants to go every bit of a mile and an eighth, maybe even farther. So he galloped out well in that race. I think he's going to be close enough to stay in contention. And hopefully somebody can go with straight up G and not give him that comfy length and a half, two length cushion that he got to enjoy last time. So I'm going to give Bye Bye Bobby a chance to turn the tables here uh, at the price of nine to two. Uh, I'll take the shot. That's a great pick. Uh, when it comes to long shots for me, uh, I'm not really going to be playing much on the long shots. The horses that I'm really interested in to use underneath in trifectas, uh, I'm definitely going to be interested in the horse that you spoke about, um, Dirt, uh, Pepper Spray. I think this is one of those horses that he's ran a clunker last time out, um, and he, he's going to he's going to come out of that race and just improve. He, he trained three times recently. Really well, put up good numbers in the morning. He's been training with a workmate that's pretty good. Um, so this is a horse I'm going to be using underneath. I think the horse is interesting. Again, as I said last time, if you backed him last time, you probably have to back him here again. Um, and the other horse which I find interesting, which I'm probably going to put in third in a lot of tries, is that Chrome King. I was very impressed with that nut coming out of Turf Paradise. You don't see that very often, um, horses like that. And I did, as you said, watch that replay. I don't know how the jockey must have traveled an extra 500 feet. I mean, they, they went everywhere, but looped the field, came up and closed hard and just kept going. So uh, definitely a horse I'm going to be using underneath in my trifectas. Did uh, you have any long shot here? Yeah, so I had a hard time latching on to any long shots that I really felt strongly about. I did kind of like the two that you mentioned a little bit, but the one that I'm probably going to throw in maybe third of a trifecta would be the three Fowler Blue. I'm a big fan of playing horses that were up against some kind of bias last out. And when they get a different set of uh, scenarios or different situation this time, Feller Blue still has to overcome the fact that he's likely going to be a mid-pack to deeper closer in this field, which does not really play to the way Sunland Park typically runs. But he did get the rail last time, which has been just unfathomably, unfathomably bad. So I really think that you know maybe sitting on you know second off a layoff here off the short break. Uh, with a slightly better post draw, getting off that dead rail, and hopefully getting a little more pace up in front. I think Fowler Blue's a horse that could outrun his odds and make some noise, at the very least, in the bottom of your exactos and trifectas. I love, I love the picks. Uh, so we have a great weekend. It's going to be on Sunday, so a little action. Been quieter on the Sundays lately with this action, so it'll be nice to play a little Sunland Park. Uh, the big day, Sunland Park, uh, going off as race number 11 on the card, the Sunland Park Derby, 50 points available for the road to the Derby, one and one eighth of a mile. Nice little field of eight here with some shippers and some local horses. Uh, just one point of note, very interesting, when you when you get to these smaller preps later in the season, uh, four of these horses raced against each other last race at Sunland. So I'd like to see that they're not traveling as much and uh, interested to see how this race turns out, if we possibly get some long shots underneath. Ask you to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Horse Racing Nation. Uh, we'll be posting videos all throughout the road to the Derby, all the way up to the Derby.